This is just a short demonstration video on uh, electrical installation testing um, for under AS3000 and 3018. Um, and um, mainly for focused on apprentices learning the trade so they understand a bit more about section 8 of the AS3000 um, testing and verification. So that's our new wiring rules this year for 2018. And all of section 8 in that um, standard uh, talks about testing and verification of electrical installations. So we see up there in figure 8.1 there's a sequence of um, testing. We've got to do earth testing, we've got to do insulation testing, polarity, short circuit, correct Kurt circuit connections. And these are all mandatory tests under the standard that must be performed um, once you've completed wiring and electrical installations must be tested and verified. So the first um, test we conduct is clause uh, 835, continuity of the earthing system. And um, clause 8352 talks about the expected results for those um, tests that you do perform. So uh, basically what it talks about there is going to table uh, 8.2 where it gives typical values of earth uh, resistance for particular scenarios of electrical circuits. So if we're on a 16 amp breaker on 2.5 mil, we can go across and measure or, or determine what the resistance of the earth conductor should be for that particular circuit. So uh, getting into the testing, uh, we just need an ohm meter in, for in the first instance. Uh, we just select ohms and check your zero point on your own meter to make sure you've got good lead uh, continuity resistance. In this case it would be 0.1 ohms of the uh, resistance of those leads. So we test the main earth conductor, we go on to uh, we go on to the earth link in the main switchboard and clip on that earth link and then we go inside the installation using a trailing need, lead if we need to and we test the earth resistance at each uh, particular point of the installation. Any equipment that's required to be earthed should be earthed and it must comply with that table 8.2. So the socket outlets are all earth 0.1, 0.1, all sort of showing less than 1 ohms which is a pretty good indication. Our lighting points um, up to there, we've got 1.9 in there, so we'd have to question that connection in that lighting point because it's a bit high, that particular resistance, time you take away, and we'd have to look at the size circuit breaker and the size of cable. Uh, equal potential bonding on water pipes have to be less than 0.5 ohms, the same as your earth resistance of your main earth conductor must also be less than. 0.5 ohms. So they're the only two less than 0.5. All the rest have got to be low enough to operate the circuit protection in the time required for your earthing. So a simulated hot water service there, got an earth conductor there which is uh, less than uh, 0.3 there, a sub main to a garage and a range, a simulated range there. So I've tested the earth resistance for everything there and that complies except for that lighting point which we'd need to reinvestigate. So earth resistance, that's quick and easy, a point to point test. The switchboard's outside and all this equipment's inside, sometimes you have to use a trailing lead between the switchboard and inside and use your, um, uh, subtract your continuity resistance off that trailing lead if you do use that method. So uh, that's for earth resistance testing. Insulation resistance. Insulation resistance is the next sequence of testing in our standard. So we've tested everything that's required to be earth. It is earth. So now we do the insulation resistance of each of the final sub circuits. So I have an IR tester and we select the 500 volt scale because the um, test, the pressure test of the insulation has to be performed at twice the rate of voltage under your uh, section 8 standard. So this is all done at the origin of the circuit in the switchboard, your IR testing, it's a pressure test 
done at 500 volts DC and the real state it must be greater than one mega so I check the uh, meter zeroed okay and then I'll go through and test all outgoing individual conductors to each final sub circuit and it's all showing a reading there of infinity except for these last two circuits we're seeing the range and the hot water are dropping to 0.01 mega ohms or 10,000 ohms which means any electrical equipment incorporating a sheathed heating element like a hot water service or an electric range is permitted by the standard to drop the insulation down to uh, less uh, to be greater than 0.01 mega ohm or 10k all your other circuits your light and power and sub mains and so on <coughs> must be greater than one mega ohm in the middle of the scale there so must be in that range of your IR tester uh, and that's it yes yeah, so that's your IR testing for the whole installation there's a couple other methods you could bring into it but that checks each individual final sub circuit that's originating at your switchboard okay so I've already done earth insulation and the uh, section 8 says earth insulation polarity must be your next um, check to make sure socket outlets are polarized in earth active neutral in a clockwise direction it must be a clean socket actives must be switched in lighting points then neutrals not so we've got to check that polarity is correct um, and the same for ranges and sub mains so with that one we'll just use and this one can just be a point to point tester or a continuity function so in this case we can go from one end of the circuit say on an active at the switchboard to an active at the power point there can you see that uh, uh, and I prove that the active is switched and I'll go on the neutral conductor into the neutral terminal neutral terminal and I prove that the act of the neutral is not switched in that case so yeah that's um and we do that for lighting points and socket outlets polarity so it's point to point in that regard with a continuity function uh, you can use um, a resistor block you can use a little resistor block arrangement so if I uh, just disconnected say power circuit at the origin and I'll connect up these resistors which are 5, 10, 15 ohms connect it up in that order active to neutral to earth and if I take an ohm meter and measure active to neutral I've got 15 active to earth, I've got 5 and neutral to earth, I've got 10. So I'll go down to the end of the circuit then and I'll measure the equivalent resistances on that circuit. So down here I've got active to earth 5 ohms and it's switched and neutral to earth I've got 10 ohms and it's unswitched and active to neutral I've got 15 ohms and it's unswitched, uh, sorry it's switched so I've proven that the active switch that's neutral and that's earth um, so I've proven the polarity of that power point same with your light you'd be going from active to your lighting point and proving that the active switch there um, so that's a, that uh, is a more efficient way one person can connect these resistors at the switchboard then go inside and do all their polarity testing at their equipment and finally um, we come up to do short circuit testing before it can be energized so a short circuit test again with an ohm meter check the zero point and we check 
active to neutral with an ohm meter at the origin to make sure there's no short circuit there. If the meter was reading zero ohms, there'd be a short circuit and it'd be very dangerous. So we check each circuit active to neutral and the range active to neutral and the hot water uh, active to neutral there. Okay, so um, we've checked there's no short circuit resistance there. Um, so that's very briefly it, it's very quick, but it's sort of, you can watch it a couple of times and just go over that sequence of earth resistance, continuity testing, insulation resistance, polarity and short circuit testing. Thank you.